Benvenuto nella famiglia di Gesù Cristo, it's Brother G, and I welcome you all to the Capo for Christ channel. Now tonight I've got an amazing word for y'all. We're gonna take a little uh, trip down history lane, not uh, his story lane, but history lane. But before we get into any of that, I gotta tell y'all who brings this channel to life, who our sponsors are, and first and foremost, we give all praise, honor, and glory to Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He sponsors this channel. He sponsors this ministry. He sponsors everything in Jesus Christ's name that has to do with me. And he should sponsor everything in life that has to do with you. Physically, spiritually, everything. He should be your go-to source for everything. Secondly, this channel is brought to you by my restaurant, Gaetano's New York Kitchen. Um, Come check us out if you're in the Atlanta area for one of the best meals of your life. Uh, if you'd like to see another side to me, uh, the cooking side, the chef side, uh, I invite you all to go onto uh, TikTok uh, under Chef G, uh, Gaetano's uh, underscore NY Kitchen. I'll have it posted up below, down below, if y'all want to see a little bit of cooking, a little break from the preaching, and see what else we do. Anyway, tonight's message um, is actually a very serious one because it's going to kind of lay the groundwork of a topic that I have to speak on that's going to take a long time. It's going to be many messages, multi-different sermons and topics. So tonight we're going to get into, we're going to kind of just break the ice a little bit of, around it. And uh, it's, it's about the uh, Phoenicians, the ancient Phoenicians, and the Tuatha de Dinan. If you don't know who those people are, they are the tribe of Dan, which is one of the 12 tribes of Israel, okay? See, because one of the devil's jobs, well, his three main jobs are to steal, kill, and destroy. And he does a pretty good job of that. And part of how he does that is by being the father of lies. So people today, our mainstream, uh, his story is BS, okay? I spent years in a closet with the Lord before I got back on YouTube. I know what I'm talking about. The stuff is researched. And there are things that I have to drop on y'all that is going to be unbelievable. I'm not just saying that to try and, you know, get attention or view, I, 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 I'm not. I'm, it's not easy to talk about this stuff. If you think it is, get in the cave with God yourself and, and just do your own thing, okay? However, we have been lied to. We don't even know in society where we are. We don't even know when we are in history, okay? So part of what I'm gonna to do tonight is to break down a little bit of that, okay? And I'm gonna show y'all who the Phoenicians were, that they were the tribe of Dan, and the Tuatha de Danan. They were also the tribe of Dan. That's where Ireland gets its origins from, before the Huguenots even. I don't wanna get uh, ahead of myself. Um, the Phoenicians though, they taught like the word phonics, right that's it comes from phoenicia the telephone comes from phoenicia so that should show you what a major importance the phoenicians have on our society today that's why i'm even talking about this stuff because nobody knows who they really are no preacher has I, i've ever heard ever preach about it because they don't know they don't know so the tribe of Dan, okay, is, okay, in, in Revelation, there is 144,000 virgins that the Lord chooses. They are blood Israelites, 12,000 from one of each of the 12 tribes. Not really, though, because the tribe of Joseph is split in two. The tribe of Manas Manasseh or Manasseh. However you want to say it, say it. And the tribe of Ephraim. Those two tribes are 24,000 of the 144,000, but they combine 
to be the tribe of Joseph. The tribe of Dan is not included because God wrote them off because they are not his children. He disowned them. They have no inheritance in him because of everything that they did. And we're going to back everything up with scripture. If you all know me, you know I back it all up with scripture. Okay, I got to lay the groundwork for this. So, the tribe of Dan was disinherited by the Most High God. They are not part of the 144,000 virgins from the tribes of Israel that will play a major role in the end days army of the Lord. That's not the topic for tonight. The topic of tonight is a history lesson to show and prove to y'all who the tribe of Dan really were and are today. They are the Phoenicians of old, and they are also the Tuatha de Danan. And I keep bringing that up because they went to Ireland, and then they went through all of Europe, even the uppermost parts of Europe, uh, not even Europe, the Norse people, the Scandinavian, all of that. We'll get there as we get through this material. So, Phoenicians were great merchant class of people. They were the tradesmen of the ancient world. Business practices and laws that we have today come from Phoenicia, come from the tribe of Dan. So before we uh, get too side, not sidetracked, but into other stuff about them, I always like to go to scripture from the horse's mouth, from the word of God. So we're gonna to go to Genesis chapter 49, verse 17. We're gonna see what was prophesied about the tribe of Dan in the beginning, okay? So the Lord says in Jesus' name, Dan shall be a serpent by the way, an adder in the path that biteth the horse heels, so that his rider shall fall backward. Okay, so Dan shall be a serpent by the way. We know that that old serpent, the devil, right? So right there, we see that the tribe of Dan is corrupted by the devil. He will be a serpent by the way. What else did the Lord say though? He said he will be an adder in the path. An adder is a very venomous snake that biteth the horse heels. The horse, if you really want to break this down prophetically and all of this and really get technical, horses can be vehicles, they can be prophecies. We see how the uh, four horsemen of the apocalypse, uh, you know, it's death, famine, pestilence, plague, these things. Uh, the horse could be that, that the tribe of Dan is bringing about these things. He's biting the horse's heels. So the natural path that God had set He's going to bite the heels and make horrible things happen, okay? And the last part of this in Genesis 49, 17 says, so that his rider shall fall backward. So he's going to bring society backward, okay? This is the tribe of Dan from the Lord's own mouth. Now, I'm going to post up on, on the screen one of the end signs of Dan. And an ensign is a banner. If you read in the book of Numbers, uh, when the Lord is giving all of the tribes of Israel their territories, including the tribe of Dan, because he knew what they were. He prophesied in Genesis what they were through Jacob, speaking blessings to his sons, except the curse unto Dan. Isn't that interesting? Uh, so a banner, uh, because the Most High God is known as the Lord of Hosts. The Lord of Hosts is the Lord of Armies, okay? He's a militant-minded king, our king. So this banner of Dan um, is known, is, is, is y'all are looking at it on the screen, you see it's uh, the, the scales of justice with a serpent riding up, up it, which looks like a flagpole or some, t some type of pole. And uh, that looks very much like the caduceus, the, uh, the medical um, symbol that, that, that modern medicine goes by. So we also get modern medicine from the Phoenicians, from the tribe of Dan, 
okay? We get a false justice system, which is the just us system that we live in today, also by the tribe of Dan. These, these, this balanced scale is only balanced by the serpent, as you see in this picture. Also, the Phoenicians, there are other variations of this where it's purple. The Phoenicians were known as the purple people eaters. Now, I know that sounds kind of funny if you ever heard that term before, the purple people eaters or whatever. That's actually speaking of the tribe of Dan, the Phoenicians, okay? Uh, because purple was a royal color. It was very hard to make purple dyes. They used like uh, certain mollusk shells and things like that to create these dyes. And that all, again, it has to do with trading, trade routes, uh, merchant, the merchant class, uh, Phoenicians, okay? So let's look next at a, um, actually let's go to Judges 5 and 17 here, just to uh, get a little more from the Word of God about the tribe of Dan, because I gotta lay this out exactly who these people are and prove it to y'all through scripture. Okay, so Judges 5 and 17 says, Gilead abode beyond Jordan. And why did Dan remain in ships? Asher continued on the seashore and abode in his breaches. Okay, so Gilead abode beyond Jordan, but why did Dan remain in ships? One thing that is the, the ancient Hebrews are known for is land travel. Look, they were the Red Sea pedestrians, right? When they crossed the Red Sea. <laughs> They were not known to be seafaring people. The Phoenicians were, though. I'm going to put a, um, a map up real quick of the, um, what the world looked like in the time of uh, Dan in the uh, old world here. Now, this map here... As you can see, it shows the land of Canaan. The land of Phoenicia is on the coastline. And the, uh, if we look on the Mediterranean Sea here, on the easternmost part of it, which would be the west coast of the middle, middle, of, of the middle east here, uh, right next to Gashar, we see Phoenicia, right, on the coast. We go down, we see uh, ancient Israel. Right below that, the white part is where the tribe of Dan, which is right in the middle of Canaan, and Philistia. So the Philistines, the Canaanites, and the Phoenicians are literally encircling and along the coastline with the tribe of Dan. So the tribe of Dan, we know all the wickedness that the ancient Israelites got into as a whole. Now this map here is the divided holy land kingdom. This is, map is from one of my reference books that I use to study. And uh, this is something that I do stand behind uh, as far as the, uh, the, the illustration of this. It's geographically correct as far as placement, as where the word of God tells us these places were. We have Moab, we have the kingdom of Edom, we even have Judah, the southern kingdom, which David ruled there, uh, Israel, which is the northern kingdom. So at this point, the tribes were all separated. And we can see here, it's all color coordinated for each tribe where they are. If you want, pause the video, study this if you want. But the white part there, right on the coastline, is where the tribe of Dan's inherited lands were from the Lord. It's also part of Philistia, which is the Philistines' land. They were not good people, the Philistines. They were our enemies of the children of Israel since time immemorial. The tribe of Dan got ensnared with them and became part of them. It's also in Canaanite territory, as you can see. And to the northern part is Phoenicia, okay? These people, what I'm saying is Dan, the tribe of Dan, left Israel and became their own people because we just read in the Word of God, why did they remain in ships? That's literally a question that is in the Word of God. Why did the tribe of Dan remain in ships? So we know that they are seafaring people. The Phoenicians were the best at seafaring people. They were the actual Vikings or six kings 
If you all know about that, the real Vikings, the six kings, will actually get to a little bit of that towards the end of the sermon on who these people are. And guess what? Yes, it's the tribe of Dan. All the tribes did wickedness. The Lord reprimands all the tribes, Judah among them. But we know Jesus Christ came from the tribe of Judah. All these tribes, they did not do the unspeakable thing and blot themselves out from the tree of life, from the inheritance of the covenant that God made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. However, the tribe of Dan did. And for their great sins, which we will see in the word of God, not only did they get disinherited, but the devil took a liking to them. The word of God tells us, God tells us that he calls the tribe of Dan a serpent by the way. So their father is the devil. If you ever hear me speak of serpent seed, I'm not talking about a literal seed. That's whatever, okay? I'm literally talking about these people, the tribe of Dan, the Phoenicians, those that went the way of Cain, as I believe it says in the book of Peter, 1 Peter, I believe. So there, that's enough of that map right there, uh, the geography of it. That's just to show you, we heard in scripture that they remained in ships. And what do you do with ships? You sail. So they got incorporated. They got incorporated with the Phoenicians. They became the Phoenicians. And the Phoenicians also, Tyre is not on this map here. Uh, at least it's not illustrated, but it's, it is there. Uh, there's a message that I re-released recently. Um, it's titled, the, the, the message is actually titled, The Wisest Fool, but it's uh, uploaded as uh, King Solomon's business partner was Freemasonry's idol, Hiram Abif. Okay, he was a Phoenician king of Tyre. Yes, he was probably a member of the tribe of Dan as well. So that's, you know, it's just showing you the, the, the lineage there. If you don't know about that message, if you haven't seen that message, please check it out. It's not that. Apologies for that, brothers and sisters. My camera got cut off. I rebuked the devil in Jesus' name. So now that I got nice and sidetracked off of what I was talking about, let's get right back into it. We were talking about the tribe of Dan being the Phoenicians, the ancient Phoenician people, and the Tuatha de Danan. So um, the seeding into society of the Phoenicians holds true till today. Like I was saying, laws that we have today, uh, even the occultic practices that they were doing, people still do these practices today. The child sacrifice, uh, the abortion, the Moloch uh, sacrifice, the worshiping Moloch, go if a person goes to a strip club, the Ashtaroth poles, uh, these are all deities of the Phoenicians. All the tribes were worshiping Baal and all this crazy stuff and the occult does it today uh, so yeah and if you don't believe me let's go to Deuteronomy real quick and for, uh, chapter 33 verse 22 and thus says the Lord and of Dan he said Dan is a lion's whelp he shall leap from Bashan Okay, well that on its surface doesn't really seem like it's saying anything because Jesus is the lion from the tribe of Judah. Dan is a lion's whelp. That should be good, right? No, wrong. The devil roars about as a, goes about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. A lion's whelp would be a child of that lion and the devil is that lion that we are speaking of. Specifically in this scripture, we already saw that uh, God uh, proclaimed that Dan is a serpent by the way. We saw that Dan, why is Dan staying in ships? This is a question in the word of God because the Hebrews were not seafaring people. They were land lovers. So why did they become the Vikings, the six kings? Why? Because they got into the Phoenicians. They, they were enveloped into the Phoenician culture. One thing that I completely didn't even talk about yet, but let's finish with this scripture. This just came to mind and we do have to go over it. But with this scripture, it says that he, he shall leap 
from Bashan. If you remember, Bashan was the land of the last stand of the Nephilim tribes in the days of Moses. When Moses and Joshua and the children of Israel in totality captured King Og, last of the Ref king of the Rephaim, last of his kinsmen, that was from the land of Bashan, King Og of Bashan. So if Dan, who has been called a serpent by the Lord, now is being called a lion's whelp, that would be safe to assume that that is the lion that goes about as a roaring lion, the devil, and he shall leap from Bashan, the land of the Nephilim. So um, before we go any further with that, and you know what, don't forget that I just brought that scripture up because uh, we do have further to, to, to prove in that in the Word of God. But now I'm going to post on the screen um, the language of Phoenician and Hebrew, Paleo-Hebrew, and there is absolutely no difference. So if the Word of God isn't enough, maybe this will be enough. If you're a doubting Thomas out there, take a look what I have on the screen here. I have the Phoenician language. I have Paleo-Hebrew language here. The 22 characters are exactly the same. They are not close to, they do not resemble, they are the same language. So that's like me, I'm speaking English to you, but I want to tell you, uh, no, I'm speaking Gaetanoese, okay? You look at me like I was crazy because you know that I'm speaking English, just like the Hebrew language is in front of you here, and they want to call it Phoenician. Uh, no, it's the same thing. So obviously, the tribe of Dan took their mother language, the Hebrew tongue, and brought it with them as they enveloped themselves and became the Phoenicians, okay? And sailed across the seven seas. But before we get to them sailing across the seven seas, I got to beat it in everybody's head with the scripture, with the word of God, because that's what we stand on in this ministry is the word of God. So go to Ezekiel chapter 28. There's a message that I have coming out, Lord willing, that will talk about this entire chapter. This is the chapter where God uh, talks about Lucifer and it's kind of uh, a dialogue of sorts from the Most High God. So we're gonna, for our purposes tonight though, we're just gonna look at chap, uh, chapter 28, verse two. Now listen to this, this is very, I'm gonna break it down. Son of man, he's talking to Ezekiel, son of man, the only prophet he called son of man other than Jesus, interesting, huh? Say unto the Prince of Tyrus, oh wow, this Prince of Tyrus is not a man that he's talking to. And Tyre would be the Prince of Tyrus. Tyrus, Tyre, it's interchangeable. Tyre, Tyrus was the capital city of, of Phoenicia in those days. This prince that the Most High is speaking to is Lucifer. Going through the subsequent uh, verses in this chapter, it becomes very evident. He's literally detailing Lucifer's physical description in heaven with pipes in his chest and all different types of stones and the beauty and all this stuff when he was, uh, you know, ahead of the choir in heaven, in other words. But that's, listen here, let's start over. Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus, thus saith the Lord God. Now, another thing here, I got to stop myself because where it says the Lord God, in Hebrew, in the original scripture, if you go to the interlinear or the Masoretic or whatever you want to go to to look up the original words, Jehovah is the word. Jehovah is the word here for God in the first part of verse 2. So the Most High is referencing himself, obviously, where it says, Thus saith the Lord God. But if you wanted to get technical, thus saith Jehovah. Because thine heart, because your heart is lifted up, and thou hast said, I am a God. I sit in the seat of God. Okay, that's all capital G's in the um, King James. But if you go to the original, the Hebrew there, that God is not Jehovah. That God would be El or Elohim. Uh, 
interchangeable there. It actually is used both times there, El and Elohim. El is another word for Lord or Bachal, Baal. Baal is that Lord. Um, or, which, uh, yeah, Satan is Baal. Okay, let's, let's just call it for what it is. Okay? Uh, and Elohim would be, uh, you know, could be a fallen angel. So Lucifer is a fallen angel. So Elohim or El will be the words here. So let's start over again. Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus, thus saith the Lord God, because thine heart is lifted up, and thou hast said, I am a God. I sit in the seat of God, in the midst of the seas, meaning the oceans, the S-E-A-S, -E the seas, sitting in the midst of the seas. So if Satan is the prince of Tyre, as God, the Most High, just said. Satan is the prince of Tyre, and he is sitting in the midst of the seas. What people is he inhabiting? Who is remaining in ships? Dan, who is the great seafaring people? Phoenicia, so Dan, who was in the ships at the sea where Satan is dwelling. Satan is inhabiting the children of Dan. Doesn't that make sense to why they were cut off from the inheritance in the book of Revelation in the very end when God calls his army for Jesus Christ to be the actual general of? What is left out there? The tribe of Dan. Because Satan is their general. Okay? I am a God. I sit in the seat of God, in the midst of the seas. Yet thou art a man, and not God, Jehovah. Though thou set thine heart as the heart of God. Isn't that interesting? Yet thou art a man. That is very, very deep there. Um, I'm not going to get into that aspect of it that has to deal with fallen angels actually wanting to inhabit men, the stars in Hollywood, Los Angeles, the Lost Angels, City of the Lost Angels. Those celebrities are the fallen angels that are actually the actual fallen angels that are not in prison. They're inhabiting meat suits. Okay. So yes, the Antichrist, we know the Antichrist will inhabit a meat suit. I have a separate message for this, it also has to do with Psalm 87, I believe, or 82, when it says, y'all, I'm not going to get into that right now, but that, yet thou art a man, because they miss the physicality of it all, these fallen entities. They want to be in the flesh, and it seems like the flesh wants to be in the spirit. It's so crazy. It's one of those situations where the grass is greener, I guess, right? So let's continue on here. Yet thou art a man and not God, though thou set thine heart as the heart of God. That can get into the whole abomination and desolation thing. We're just looking at this for the context of Dan. So the prince of Tyre, because it says, Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus, thus saith the Lord God, because thou hast lifted thine heart up, all that stuff, to say that they are God. He's speaking to Lucifer. Lucifer is the prince of Tyre. And uh, Dan is in the midst of the seas. He's in the boats, in the midst of the seas. Yet thou art a man. So I hope I proved that part there. Let's carry on to Amos 1 and 9. Thus saith the Lord, for three transgressions of Tyrus and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof. Let's stop right there real quick. For three transgressions of Tyrus and for four. If I were to, or I'm not going to use myself, but if a person were to transgress somebody, they would have to be affiliated, right? So let me, let me explain it like this. We are talking about the tribe of Dan here. We're talking about the Phoenicians because Tyre is the Phoenician capital. Dan can only transgress because they were affiliated with God. They were part of the covenant. They were part of the promise that God made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. 
let me put it like this. If a person was a thief, right, and they're stealing stuff, have they transgressed you? No, they haven't. But if they were to break into, I don't even want to use you as the viewer as an example in this, because I'm very careful about not speaking curses over people. But say a person was to steal from somebody that one knew, they would have transgressed that person then because they stole from that person that they knew, okay? So otherwise they're just a thief. It doesn't have any meaning. It wouldn't be a transgression. Do y'all catch it? Okay. All right, so let's let's start this again. Amos 1 and 9. Thus saith the Lord for three transgressions of Tyrus and for four. In other words, what I'm trying to say here is God wouldn't give a damn about Tyrus because if it wasn't the tribe of Dan, because there would be no covenant with the tribe of Dan. They would be the heathen people, which Yahweh would have had no interest in in those days. Okay? However, to be able to transgress the law of God or God at all, one would have to be associated with him. And Yahweh was very mute, very exclusive in those days. Okay, so, so we got that straight there. Tribe of Dan is the Phoenicians, they're in Tyre. Okay, I got to prove it 10,000 ways so there's no talk back on this. Because it's important what I have upcoming in the future to tell you. Okay, I will not turn away the punishment thereof. Because they delivered up the whole captivity of Edom and remembered not the brotherly covenant. Okay, so what does all that mean? Okay, well, I will not turn away the punishment thereof because they delivered up the whole captivity of Edom. That means because if you look at the prophet Obadiah, that's the judgment on the tribe of, well, not the tribe, but on Esau, the Edomites, their destruction. The tribe of Dan had to deal with that. The, 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 the Phoenicians were part of that, God's judgment on that, but they got to be punished too because they were part of the covenant themselves. And the Edomites at the end here, and remember not the brotherly covenant, which Esau did not remember the brotherly covenant. That goes back to the days of Jacob. So there, I hope I prove to y'all about the Phoenicians being the tribe of Dan. And I hope I showed that they went out in ships and they became the Vikings. Now, once the diaspora happened and all the tribes went out, yes, they all got separated to the winds. And in various scriptures, we see that. But we're focusing here on the tribe of Dan tonight because there's a second group of people I said, the Tuatha De Danan. Now, who are they? Before I talk about who they are, as a result of Dan being in these ships, these merchant Phoenicians that went out to conquer the world, which is really what they did. They, we, we read right there in Ezekiel that Satan sets himself up to be God. Satan's spirit is inhabiting the tribe of Dan, the Phoenicians. He is their father, the father of lies. Satan has destroyed the timeline, made people not even know when they are right now, yes, I said that correctly, when we are, nor where we are either, okay? So, that being said, part of what they did when they went out, they had to conquer other lands and assimilate themselves. Ireland was part of it. The Tuatha de Danan are the earliest form of deified Elohim-like beings known to Ireland. This goes before the Huguenots. And the Huguenots might have been other tribes that ended up coming as well. I'm not getting into that aspect of it. This is before that. This is the godlike people, the Tuatha de Danan. And I'm going to prove to you right now that they are the tribe of Dan. Simply by definition, Tuatha means tribe. Day means divine or God. Danan literally means Dan. Okay, so the Tuatha de Danan, who is the gods of Ireland, because that's what they were looked at as eternal gods, it is translated to the divine God-like tribe of Dan, 
literally is what Tuatha De Danann translates to. Now, let's give a little context historically what is said about the Tuatha De Danann. They landed at Connaught coastline, which is on the western coast of Ireland. That's the Connaught coastline. So obviously they came in ships, okay? Now there's a big supernatural aspect to this that, that, that gets tied in. So let's just read this here. They landed at the Connaught coastline and emerged from a great mist. Wow. It is speculated that they burned their boats to ensure that they settled down in their new land. So the tribe of Dan, the Tuatha de Danan, these Phoenicians had enough of travel. They didn't want to go back because there was nothing left back there for them. They wanted this new land, Ireland, so they burned their ships. They burned their ships. They had four great treasures or talismans. See, these are the witchcraft things that they're learning from their gods that demonstrated their skills. The first was the Stone of Fowl which would scream when a true king of Ireland stood on it. It was later placed on the hill of Tara. Interesting. What was the name of Abraham's father? Wasn't it Tara or Tara? Interesting how they're keeping just a little bit of their past, huh? The tribe, not the tribe, but the hill of Tara. Abraham's father. It's a nod to him, I'm telling you. The seat of the high kings of Ireland was placed on this hill of Tara. The second talisman was the magic sword of Nuadha, which was capable of inflicting only mortal blows when used. So when it was used, the sword, it would only kill. Well, I know there are a few spiritual swords one being the sword of the spirit, which we arm ourselves with every day, which is the word of God, the spirit of God, Jesus Christ's mouth cutting like a two-edged sword, sharper than any two-edged sword. So this is a bastardization of that. There's other uh, swords of the Lord. You know, there's the glittering spear of God. There's all these spiritual weapons we can use when doing spiritual warfare, not this message. But this is just a bastardization of that. They had this, uh, this uh, magic sword, Nuadha. Then the third talisman that they had was the slingshot. Come on, man, that's David. David killed the giant Goliath with the slingshot. Come on. They're stealing this stuff from their own past. All right, you see in this here? Okay, now, uh, now that slingshot of the sun god, the S-U-N in the, in the sky. You know, in, 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 in Scripture, in Malachi and in other prophets, we hear of the Son of Righteousness and the Son of this and that. And I have messages to talk about that. But this is a nod, a bastardization of how the Most High actually uses the sun in the sky. And they're, you know, using it here too in a sick, demonic way that, you know, Jesus said with his own mouth, Y'all know the way to heaven, but y'all go through a different door. And he was talking to the Jews. So, you know, the Noahide ones. All right, so the final treasure was the cauldron of Daghada, from which an endless supply of food issued. That is a nod to God giving manna from heaven to feed the Israelites when they were wandering through the wilderness of Sinai. Come on, this is ridiculous. This, 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 uh, bastardization history, which I'm not going to call it a false history. This stuff probably happened, but it's a, it's stolen from what the Most High actually did for his children. You see how I gave an example of each, with each one of those here? Now let's keep it moving for the sake of, um, for the sake of keeping it moving. The Tuatha de Danan, they renamed everywhere they went. So everywhere they went, they renamed it after themselves. Now, I'm going to read off to you some of the places that they went, and you're going to be shocked because I told you all in the beginning this was a history lesson, not a his story lesson. This is a real history lesson on how these places were formed, okay? Because the tribe of Dan ultimately is at the root of the uh, dispersion of wickedness in the ancient world. 
that came into this modern world, which is less than the ancient world. And when I say less, what I mean is everything we have today is not as good as it was in the old days. From our architecture, the way we build stuff, our technologies, we have to use frequencies and Wi-Fi's and Satan's nonsense. When in the old days, they were able to levitate with sound frequencies and melt rocks with sound. We're not going to get into that today. That's for other talks and other messages. But the Tuatha Dei Danan, they renamed everywhere they went. Scandinavia was one of the places. Let's break that down. Scan Dan Avia. They put their name in everywhere that they go. London. London. Yes. The British are from the tribe of Dan. London. London. Now, if you don't believe me with that, he's like, nah, gee, you're reaching. No, I'm not. Brit, broken down in Hebrew, means contract or covenant. The word British, Brit, the first part, means covenant or contract. The last part, ish, means man in Hebrew. So Britain, Britain British, literally means the covenant man. The covenant man from Hebrew, from Hebrew origins. Lun, Dan, is British, right? Brit, the covenant, ish, man, in Hebrew. You can't tell me these people did not go to London. London was named for them, and that's a capital city under Rex Force Law, an old Roman law, that London is the financial uh, capital of the Antichrist. I've talked about it in old sermons that we re-uploaded. You all know about that if you don't know about it already. Now, another place that they went was Denmark. Denmark, okay? Denmark. Now, you can say, oh, no, you're reaching there, G. It's Denmark, not Denmark. If you don't know that you can move vowels around, because there were no vowels in the Paleo-Hebrew language, an A can be an E. It changes meanings a little bit, but or, or whatever, Denmark. They went to Denmark, Denmark too, the Tuatha Dei Danan, tribe of Dan. Okay, now another place they went, and this is really, I'm going to kind of end it on this, because that's enough information for now, I don't want this to be too long of a message. The Danube River, they named after themselves. They named the Danube River, river after themselves. Now, that's pretty much how they got the rest of Europe and elsewhere. Let's Let, let me just explain to you where the Danube River goes through. It flows through, okay, first of all, it is located in Central and Eastern Europe. It flows from Southeast for 1,780 miles. That's like from California to the South, to, 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 to Georgia. That's about how far this river goes, almost 1,800 miles. Passing through Austria, Slovakia, Hungary, Croatia, Serbia, Romania, Bulgaria, Moldova, and the Ukraine, and into, it drains into the Black Sea. That's 10 places. Isn't there something about 10 horns in the book of Revelation? Well, I'm not saying nothing about that right now. That's not the scope of this message. But there's 10 places through Central and Eastern Europe that the tribe of Dan has uh, infiltrated way, way, way long time ago in the past, established these nations that run the world now. England is one of the world powers, okay? They are tribe of Dan, they're running it, okay? So I just wanted to show you all tonight a little bit of true history you know, we're supposed to be as wise as serpents and harmless as doves. You need to know when you are and where you are, okay? Because there's something I got to drop on you in the future, and this was just getting you ready for there. I pray that this message blessed you in Jesus Christ's mighty name. If you need anything, reach out to me, and uh, we'll see what we can do for you. If you're in the Atlanta area and you're hungry or whatever, you want to kick it, Hit up Gaetano's New York Kitchen. Check us out on TikTok, on Instagram, Facebook. We're everywhere now. Got to get with the times, right? All right, God bless y'all.